Another question that came in before the event deals with strategic alliances between distri different distribution channels servicing corporate accounts. I suppose we could tie this into your Chapter 10 of your book in terms of how to determine your sweet spot and where you invest your time and money to grow your business. Uh, you discuss customer segments and how you can reach them in that chapter. So what are your thoughts on this question regarding the future of strategic alliances to reach corporate accounts or other customer groups? I'm a longtime fan of and believer in organizations that enable indep uh, independent distributors to get together, but for multiple reasons, not just for selling national accounts. I think a very good reason for independent distributors to form strategic alliances is to buy better, of course, to leverage their purchasing power. That's obvious. But in addition to that, there's a tremendous amount of networking opportunities when distributors who have a great deal in common, including be being in the same basic trade line, but in different geographic markets, are able to share ideas, uh, to help one another, to act as an informal board of directors or advisory board to one another. And that gets to your question, which is a third reason independent distributors get together in strategic alliances is to sell national accounts. Our experience with that is that it's often reactive in nature, meaning uh, one of the distributor members in the association who has a national account and uh, presently is servicing that account and may be very happy to have all the business finds that the national account is considering going to another supplier. Perhaps it's a national company that is promising to, uh, to do a better job servicing on a uniform basis throughout the country. Uh, there might be uh, other reasons. Maybe it's just a question of the uh, supplier, want, uh, the, distri um, the, 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 the customer of the distributor, the national account, wants to consolidate purchasing and reduce the number of vendors um, on their vendor list, which is also um, often, uh, often heard. So these reactive programs to, to try and salvage an account that might otherwise be lost, to me that's not usually a good outcome. It can be, but the hard economics of this is the reality of a combination of small orders and low profit margins, which can be very unprofitable for the servicing distributors. Oftentimes, some of the distributors in the strategic alliances who happen to have large locations of the customer in, in the market that they serve uh, have a nice account, even if the margins aren't particularly good. At least the order size is desirable. Uh, but customer profitability analysis, which, as you know, I'm a big believer in that and, and uh, measuring cost to serve, that shows that many times these national accounts are good for the vendors. They're good for the manufacturers of the products to get the account uh, to get the product out into the marketplace into the national account. But they're not particularly good accounts for the distributors if they have to incur a lot of freight costs uh, or they have to incur um, sales costs or they have to uh, ship, and here's the fine ointment, ship products over a long distance in order to service a national account. So I do think they're generally reactive. Most of the organizations that I'm aware of personally in, this, in the strategic alliance world aren't particularly pleased with their national account programs, and their motivation is more to please the suppliers than to please the distributors by latching onto those accounts, Lindsay. Thank you, Brent. 